Hi, I'm Freedom One uh, of FreedomGod.tv, and out this is an outreach, uh, kind of a prayer session, a culmination of people that uh, send requests and also on the forum at HearingGod.ProBoards.com, and um, people can post stuff and pray for each other all week long. But this is if we want somebody to pray with, so we can just pray uh, together uh, concerning. Uh, everything. <laughs> Hi, James. I see you. Too. <laughs> Been having some connectivity problems, but oh well. Persevere, right? So um, I had been entering in and praying, you know, as I was having all these connectivity issues, and then I began to feel the Holy Spirit burning in my stomach. And I just thank the Lord. Uh, because it's really, it can be really nerve-wracking trying to have all this pressure you know, to perform, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, just, I just feel his peace. Um, and his peace just keeps me. So um, let's get into some praise reports. A person I'll call LIL. Um, you know, people have screen names and stuff on on um, YouTube, and people write me, and I don't know sometimes if they're issue sensitive or not. So I just nickname everybody, and if if you're joining in, you know who you are. But uh, anyhow, uh, this one testifies. I just wanted to say the Lord bless you, sister, and thanks be to God for you. You prayed for me to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord has answered me. Uh, giving me some of them after seeking. So, praise the Lord. Um, it's really exciting because, um, you know, all those things mentioned in the scriptures, I mean, it, it's like a two-part. It's like, you know, some people were like, well, you can't just have everything. Well, the thing is, is that you have to understand is the Holy Spirit puts those desires within you. If you are you know, actively spiritually house cleaning and always, you know, confessing your sin and always being real with the Lord, um, you know, so that you know you won't be seeking something with the wrong heart. You know, obviously there, there are some, we know in the scripture that we're seeking it for the purpose of making gain, of making money or, or whatever, but... Um, you know, if you're really being real and your heart is right, um, and he is putting those those desires within you, you there's there's no limit uh, to what what giftings you can go into. Giftings are a blessing of of obedience. You know, the talents of the kingdom. You do your part and be obedient, and it it might be a little harder. And he'll stretch you more, but you'll be used more, and that gives him glory. And so it's just this beautiful cycle. So it's such an honor. So thank you, LIL, for testifying. Um, that's awesome. Um, Naya said um, this was on the video that I had put about learning to interpret the gift of tongues. She said, "Wow, amazing! It really works." <laughs> Yeah, let's slap the sticker on that one, right? <laughs> but anyhow, um, you know, and some of it's just uh, somebody else had posted a comment about, wow, you know, it's just kind of like common sense, uh, really getting you to think about the things that, how, ways that you can block yourself by just your thought life, um, taking things captive, you know, the enemy is right there trying to, to, uh, you know, say you have don't have something, or you're not worthy, or, or whatever. So, um, it's a war all around. So, uh, thank thank you for Naya for that. Um, let's see what else I got here. Um, oh, uh, yes, we finally got our truck. I posted a picture on the forum. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot of hard work. Um, this summer, we've had to really work a lot and it's been a blessing because you know that's the money that 
the over and a top money that we've been able to use to purchase our equipment to get out from under leased equipment. So uh, it's really awesome um, the way the Lord arranged stuff uh, so that we could, um, you know, be free of that and and just his beautiful timing, awesome plan. Um, I wanted to before I get on stuff on the on the forum, uh, I got a few Oklahoma uh, people writing me this week. They had seen the um, the video that I did. Um, I think it was called Oklahoma Fracking Warning. Basically, a dream that I had um, prior to that big uh, earthquake in Oklahoma. Um, you know, when was that? A few years ago or last year or something? Well, I can't even remember. I think it was two years ago. Um, anyhow, uh, I, you know, I had the dream, I had the, and I posted this, and I just talked about this as a warning because the Lord clearly showed me. He showed me an incident map. He showed me things pulsing. And then as I began, after, after the dream, and I began to research and stuff, um, I realized that, um, you know, it was something that I should share. And then uh, and the event happened. And then I get a lot of people coming and, you know, ah, you know, the fracking has nothing to do with the granite. You know, the, oh, the whole fracking thing is you can make big money in, in that. But what the Lord was showing me is it damages the strata and there's so much greed involved, um, you know, and, and the pollution and, and all the things. Um, it's not a good thing at all. Not good at all. But anyhow, um, here was a comment somebody had posted. They said, since they started fracking here in Oklahoma, we have earthquakes on a semi-regular basis. And as an Oklahoman, I can say that I'm... <laughs> they actually, they wrote, the Chinese government dropped $2.4 billion in my happy little state in, in 2012, investing in hydraulic fracturing companies. And they own one-third of the natural gas that will be pulled out of the ground. Now I didn't I didn't research, you know, what they're saying, but you know, that's of interest. I mean if you if you wanna if you wanna dig into the research and see if that's true, be my guest. But I thought that was pretty pretty wild. Um, and then yeah. Okay. It was just it was just those comments. So it was those were actually two comments, but it's it's interesting um, that that's coming up. And I can say that the whole fracturing thing is really going wild, and you can see it creeping from state to state to state. And uh, the Lord warned me in that dream. He said that uh, it causes earthquakes. So. Um, people get mad at me, but I'm just going by what I saw. And if you're going to say, well, that isn't Jesus, that isn't from God, then, well, oh well. Um, I got another person who asked a question. It says, I don't see people in the Bible casting demons out of themselves. Please answer. Um, this is basically part of... Um, you know, because I did the spiritual house cleaning series, and when I get to the deliverance, you know, I'm basically showing a person how they can do self-deliverance, and so, you know, valid question. Um, you know, and you also realize that not every single thing is outlined in the Bible, <laughs> um, but what we can learn is through the precepts. In, in the word. So the Bible promises we have all authority in the name of Jesus. Right? So we have authority over ourselves as well. Um, 
you know, trampling serpents and scorpions, you know, it's not quite so literal. <laughs> um, the key is, is do we have the Holy Spirit within? Okay, you remember the story of those brothers that were using the name of Jesus. That, you know, they're just using it as a formula, and they got beat the tar out of, right? But um, that's the key, is in order to do deliverance upon yourself, you know, it talks about the house being all swept up and everything, and then they return. Well, if you have the Holy Spirit, there's that doorway, so things can't return unless you open it up, you know, in, in those areas uh, of weaknesses. So, um, you know, if we've invited him in, it, you know, we're two or more in agreement, it's you agreeing with the Holy Spirit, and you do have that authority. So, uh, you know, if you don't want it, we know Jesus doesn't, then we obey what the Word says and by the precept. So, you have all authority to cast demons even out of your stuff. So, all right. Um, another person, yeah, boy, you know, it's like, it's like question week or something, so. Um, we do have them prayers coming up, so hang tight. Um, but a person had seen a, a comment on one of my videos, and this person was Catholic. It's very obvious that they were Catholic because the way they were speaking, they were saying that while they were doing their Catholic prayer stuff is when they received the Holy Spirit. And so they wrote back and they were just rejoicing. Okay. And so I had a person contact me and says, I was wondering why you hadn't corrected this person who prayed a Catholic prayer to receive the Holy Spirit. So this is my reply. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, I was a Catholic when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, who am I to judge? Now, a person might say, you know, there, there are some people out there that are really anti-Catholic or anti-this or anti-that. But you have to understand that God is, God is everybody, okay? God is not so little that he cannot reach in past Division, dividers and barriers beyond people who maybe have been fed something their whole life but have a heart for God who, you know, he's not so small that he can't reach in there. He can, okay? And I can say, hey, because I, was, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was a Catholic, uh, I'm not going to disqualify you know, I know, you know, when, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know that you know that you know, and your life has changed. And so after I left, I wasn't going to say, well, that didn't count. You know, that would be a spirit of doubt coming in, you know, or confusion or whatever. I know what, what I had in the Lord. I know that it was real. Uh and, and wonderful. And so I'm not just, I'm not going to discount any of that. So, um, you know, he's not, he's not afraid to come in and dine with whoever will invite him in. And then understand the conviction comes later. And I can share that, you know, he drew me out of the Catholic Church. I was, I was okay to stay there as a ministry to wake people up and stuff, you know, whatever, wherever the Lord would have me. But he moved us out. Um, and that's that's how it needs to be. Um, so he can do that for people in any, anywhere, you know, uh, under any tent of error or whatever. There, there are good people out there seeking that maybe have like a spirit of error or whatever um, that they've picked up along the way that hinders them in areas. So, um, the, yeah, they, 
the one example I, I really like is when um, you know Jesus goes to dine with the tax collector and all the sinners, and it was just you know, and I love the the Jesus of Nazareth clip of that. It's really really beautiful when Peter and and some of the other new disciples are just outside the house and they just cannot understand why the heck Jesus went in there and then Jesus begins to talk you know and then that conviction comes and then he just realizes you know and he, and he comes in and um, you know he's at peace with with uh, <laughs> with everyone um, so it's an awesome thing um, let me find my here we go my place where I was. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You know, the scripture in Hebrews 8, 11, um, you know, it talks about, there will come a day for all will know the Lord. And that's, you know, when you know the Holy Spirit will convict and all will know. Okay. Uh, for, for all of us, it's, you know, the, the whole pointing finger thing, it's really hard um, because we don't know the whole picture. You know, I've heard so many stories of a person being so entrenched in darkness or in error or something, but the Lord had been working on their heart for a long time. And you could be talking to that person, and they could be so angry and so, you know, have so much stuff but they're right at the precipice of change, you know. And so for us to take it in our own hands and say, well, you know, I'm going to be Jesus. And I'm going to save them. And, you know, and then that condemnation comes out. Um, you know, we really should only do what we see the Father doing, the blood of the Spirit, because correction is a very important thing. But, um, you know, in this moment, receiving the Holy Spirit, knowing that life has changed. It would be like raining on the wedding day, you know. Uh, so we just simply pray for people like that um, and not hinder and not, you know, beat them with a stick. Go this way, go that way. But trust, trust that the Lord will do it. He will. He will. And, and people like that need our support and our prayer um, as, as they go along. Um, so why don't we just pray? Um, I don't remember remotely what the person's name was, but we will just pray for people that, um, you know, they might not be perfect, but they're in the house, okay? We just thank and praise you, Lord God, for those um, those people in our lives, whether they're family or friends, those people that are dear to us, Lord God, that you are working on their hearts. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and, and just honor you when, when you use us as vessels and uh, we're able to plant seeds or we're able to water or we're able to harvest, whatever uh, role that we have in it, we just ask our own obedience uh, to be in alignment with your perfect will. And so we pray, we pray your most wondrous Holy Spirit fill, flood the lives of these people. Fill them up with your joy and your truth. Make that fire just insatiable to hunger and search after you and your word. Draw them so close to your word, Lord, and your promises and your truth, Lord God, that your truth trump any doctrines, any uh, past beliefs, whatever it is, Lord God, that your word be made new. In, in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Awesome. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, yeah, I, I have not got into some big prayers yet, so <laughs> I'm working.
working on another list right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got people email me. Um, let's pray for Christine. She said she finds it hard to submit to her husband as he doesn't believe. You know, and that is hard. Um, that whole unequal yoke thing. Um, keeps leaving me deal with everything. So I feel bitter. Um, she knows it's not good. She knows it deep down in it, within. Um, so she's just um, pleading the Lord for help. And... Um, she she had a little bit of an eye-opening experience realizing um, how she, because of this, she's been cursing herself as a victim, okay? And, you know, and you know that leaving me to deal with everything. So she feels like, oh, poor me, you know. So, um, yeah, that is that negative confession and, and just wanting to blame other people. Um, but it's two sides of the fence, you know. We're intercessors. Uh, we lift people up to God and we have to maintain our integrity in the Word and knowing who we are in Jesus and, and just having that faith beyond what what's there and we don't want to see <laughs> to seeing uh, His truth. So, um, Lord God, we just thank and praise you. Just ask for your hand upon Christine. Ask your hand of blessing upon her. Thank you, Lord God, as she is able to go on vacation, that it would be an awesome time of reflection for her, of introspection and in, in, into diving into who you are, Lord God who she is to you. Just ask, Lord God, that you would give her patience, that you would open up her awareness to the things that come in and what comes out, that you would help her to refine herself, Lord Jesus. That she may submit everything unto the obedience of you, Christ Jesus that she may make uh, those thoughts captive and that she may love that she may love. we just now pray for all those out there in relationships that are, are suffering some difficulties perhaps um, an unequal kind of situation or um, you know whatever the problems are Lord God uh, we know the enemy is targeting people targeting those relationships uh, down to the mothers and the sons and the fathers and the daughters and, and just every form of relationship the enemy is attacking but that most hold on especially of marriage uh, he's so trying to destroy because when you destroy marriage the rippling effects, uh, it destroys so much more. And so, Lord God, we just pray your blessing upon all those that are, are crying out for their mate. Crying out for restoration in relationship. And we thank and trust you, Lord Jesus. We place those people upon your altar in complete confidence, Lord God, that you will uh, work all things to the good of those that love you. We bless these. We bless them, Lord Jesus. We love them. We lift them up to you, Lord Jesus. And we speak your peace over them. Your peace. You're refreshing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right.
So I'm, I'm working off of a little side list here. Um, and I will pray for Jim right now. Yay! Lord God. Jim has uh, organic brain dysfunction. Um, it's uh, very debilitating physically. Um, makes it very uh, tiring and things cross fire in the, in the brain and just the exhaustion and, and shaking and just the mobility um, but inside uh, James is a fighter he's strong um, he's not going to just sit and waste away he's hanging on to the the truths and the promises of Almighty God I thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you can have a Got this little, um, uh, wonderful names of our wonderful Lord. This little book in, uh, store, and I, I thought, uh, that I might draw from it. Looking for one on healing or restoration to see what it has to say. Baby Shukina Kariya Pandu Parabakana. Thank you, producer Jesus. I thank you, producer Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I thought I'd find one a little quicker than this. <laughs> All right, well, So here's one called Restorer. It's basically Psalm 23 3. It says, He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Praise you, Lord God. And I am just a shot. Where is ones on Jesus or the Lord is here? Wow. Okay. There's lots of them, but there is just not. Okay. Well, <laughs> that didn't work, did it? Anyhow, uh, Jesus, you are a restorer. I just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, since restorer is what jumped out to me. That is what we will focus on you about. We cling to you, Lord God, that you are the restorer of James' physical body. I thank you, Lord God. We invite you in, most Holy Spirit, to touch those dendrites, to touch the nervous system, to touch those muscles, to breathe your peace over his body, and to rise up that strength, Lord Jesus. You strengthen the knees that are weak, Lord Jesus. Strengthen James, Lord Jesus. As you strengthen his resolve, we just speak forth your hand of healing upon his physical body, Lord God. For nothing is impossible with you.
We just speak forth that restoration, that deep restoration throughout his body. Mighty name Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, we we'll check some some other prayers here. Um Okay, um, praise report for Marvin's brother-in-law. He had had um, um, uh, surgery, melanoma cancer. Um, you know, at first it was just a really, really bad report. Um, the things have just leaps and bounds uh, progressively uh, gotten better. So that is awesome. Thank you for that report there. Um, and we do want to pray for um, Marvin's father, who is on dialysis, has congestive heart, heart failure. Um, I had mentioned, um, you know, the whole reason for the rush to getting back in was uh, having sepsis, um, which can, um, it's like a blood poisoning. Um, so we want to start there with the blood. Uh, life is in the blood. So Lord God, we just want to speak your abundant life. Your life. We speak your life. We speak to that that fluid that's been building up. We speak strength into the heart muscle. We speak that life in the blood of Jesus. Maybe she can burn out any infection in the mighty name of Jesus. We just speak to his, his body to level itself out like, is it pH or something? Uh, stabilization, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Baba, for stabilization. Just ask, Lord God, for your peace, your peace to flood over him. That, that uh, blessed assurance that he not worry. Lord God, be still his heart and he not worry but that he trusts in you, Lord Jesus. Help Marvin um, to be, be as a, a minister of comfort to him. Would you speak that refreshing over his father? Can we just speak to that heart? to receive new life in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak life in the name of Jesus. We bind up fluid buildup from any further uh, building up. We just uh, command it to stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Just ask your refreshing to flood over him, Lord. Refreshing. No stress in the name of Jesus. No stress. No stress. Okay. Yeah, just concerned about the worry thing. Um, oh, just. Okay. Um, Michelle has a blood clot near her heart. 
It's interesting. We're having heart stuff here today. Lord God, we just lift up Michelle to you. We just speak to that clot in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we just invite your angels in uh, to uh, that clot, clot in, in the name of Jesus. We just invite you in, Lord Jesus, to go in there and to do your your surgery. Clot, we just command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Command you to go. Command you to go. Command you to dissipate in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just fill her up with your peace, Lord God. Fill her up with your peace. Bless and assurance, Lord Jesus. Yeah, keep me posted on Michelle. I feel a little bit of the Holy Spirit doing something there. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, Leslie says, trouble with addictions, nicotine, caffeine, food, alcohol, <laughs> and then paternal and maternal generational curses here, um, which by the way, um, the Lord is um, wanting me to dive a little deeper in with the generational stuff. Um, he's going to put me through some more schooling, so... Um, I will share uh, whatever it is that he's leading me with, but I'm just just a heads up because I know some of it's a little bit, you know, it's hard because you say the prayers and then you're like, why is it still here? <laughs> you know, so um, I'm right there with you. Okay, I, I totally understand that, and the Lord, the Lord is hearing you, and um, He wants. He wants it gone too, so we'll we'll just see what he does. Um, need prayer in knocking these all out at once. <laughs> uh, some of us trying to kick, kick smoking and overeating at the same time too hard. What do you think? So, um, yeah, the whole the whole family's you know just uh, going onward and upward in the Lord, and and so everybody's want to be free of all this stuff at the same time. So it's really good because, you know, you guys can be a great support post for each other, right? Um, so, Lord God, um, I just thank you for this family. I thank you, Lord God, for their fervor and their hunger for you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you withhold no good thing from them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for their example, for their witness. And their zeal for you, Lord God. We, we stand in complete agreement, Lord God, for the exposure of these addictions. We'll just meet it at a root level, and we just bind up a spirit of addiction in the mighty name of Jesus. We act and sever. All ties. We repent on our, on behalf of the ancestors. Even those who are living and still living and wallowing in this, we do not receive those things for ourselves, but we cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for, for your shed blood and everything that it did. So we repent on behalf of, of these, these things, Lord Jesus. And we just declare that uh, addiction has no place, no desire in, in our lives. We bind them right now in your name, Jesus, and we command them to go beneath the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. We thank you, praise you, Lord God, that we hunger for the word of the Lord 
for the truth of the Almighty. But we fill up on what satisfies the living water that never runs dry. That we hunger and we search for the righteousness in Jesus and not in things, in the things of the world. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our, our all-sufficient God. If you fill every nook and cranny, every desire, every hope, every longing with your presence, with your truth, we just open up those places within our soul and we just invite you in, Holy Spirit. We invite you in to flood every part of us, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask that you would just place healthy regimens in our life, that you would uh, open up our eyes to those dark alleyways, that uh, uh, those familiar places that, uh, that uh, keep that door open. If it's sh even shopping in, another, in, a, in a store you haven't shopped in so that you will quit going to those the same way, expecting the same things. Uh, Lord God, whatever it is, I just ask for your revelation so that they can begin to pair what they say with what they do, that, that, it, that it be walked out hand in hand with you, Lord God. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for your hand upon them and uh, that these addictions are, are called down, void and powerless against them. Praise you, Jesus. Ooh. All right. Okay, next. Um, all right, this was a, a praise report from last month. Um, there was a, a YouTuber that submitted a prayer request for a friend, uh, for, for a person and then their friend. They both had uh, board exams. One was uh, dental and I think they were medical. And they, they said they passed and, and it's all, you know, it's awesome. They, they said that they're preparing for the next uh, round of um, exams. So um, they were asking uh, for prayer again. So uh, Lord Jesus, I just can praise you, Lord God. For you keep those that. That, uh, that desire to have their mind stayed on thee. So, Lord God, I just ask, uh, we just invite your Holy Spirit in, uh, your angels to come in, uh, that when the temptations come to put off studying or whatever, that your Holy Spirit will come in with that conviction uh, so that they will do their due diligence. I thank you, Lord God, uh, for, for a clear mind, uh, for understanding. That you just encourage them and lift them up as they walk out into this calling that you have for them. I thank you, Lord God. Okay, that you even prepare the internships and everything down the road that the most wonderful opportunities open up for this one in the mighty name of Jesus alright okay um, Naya wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit yay um, she also mentioned the enemy is trying to attack her marriage, and we kind of did that. Um, we did a prayer earlier, and I got to kind of group some of these prayers together. So, now you've watched this, receive that earlier prayer for yourself. Um, we will pray for anyone who is desiring uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, we do know that 
receiving Jesus. We receive, we receive the salvation that he has for us. But there is a further step. And it's hard when you really begin to internalize what it is to receive the Holy Spirit. It's when laying down that me, me, me stuff. And you're saying, Lord, I recognize that you made this awesome book of the Bible because you love us and you want us to have an abundant life. You want us to be excellent as you are. And we have to come to a place where, where we lay down the selfish things and say, okay, I know you know what's best for me. And I'm going to surrender and I'm going to turn it all over to you, Lord Jesus. Just that place of surrender. So, Lord God, we just thank and praise you. We thank and praise you, Lord God, for the awesome gift of salvation. But we want more. And we know that there is a cost for more. So we ask, Lord Jesus, that we decrease, that you might increase, that you might fill us up with your most Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Be filled with his truth, with his joy, with his love, with his purpose. We lay all those things down that have offended you, Lord Jesus. Those, those things, we lay them all down at your feet, Lord God. We repent for anything uh, that has been contrary to your word. And we thank you, Lord God, that we now build upon the rock of your truth. And we receive that, Lord Jesus. We invite you in, Holy Spirit. We give you permission to conform us into the image of Jesus Christ. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. Fill us up. And show us into the truth of the Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. My life is yours. My life is yours. I belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Perfect. And now we just we just continue to ask, Lord God, you came and you gave gifts to them. And so, Lord God, we just invite you as your Holy Spirit comes and floods our soul to open us up to our purpose and calling, to our giftings, the unique, wonderful plan that you have for our lives. We just receive that, Lord Jesus. We receive it. Uh, just impart dreams, impart visions, in part, uh, supernatural understanding in the word, that the word be open up to you more than ever before uh, by the power of his Holy Spirit. That you would touch spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, and that you would just reveal your destinies to these Lord Jesus. Thank you, praise you, Lord. Thank you, and praise you. Okay, and I did share on uh, on the uh, forum. <laughs> Let me open up. Um, I have been, I get songs. Um, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'll have a song blaring in my head as if a radio is playing beside me. And the Lord does these things uh, to let me know how to pray. Um, sometimes it's people I am uh, ministering to, people I'm in communion with, or um, 
you know, when the people cry out, the Lord speaks. And so, basically, the Lord just uses this. And, um, you know, it's kind of like an oddball kind of gifting or whatever. And I'm just open to, um, you know, however he's going to roll with it. So I'm trying to click on the page and it's not opening. <laughs> I might just have to go and find it the long way. Um, cause I, I wanted to read some of the the song verse. Yeah, I don't know what stuff's going slow. All right, well, while I'm waiting for that, because I, I'm i just tired of the delay, um, um, let's pray for Diane. She's been having dizzy spells and pains in various parts of her body in the back of her head. Um, you know, that kind of reminded me of uh, how it sounds for... Um, what is that phenomena called? Fibromyalgia. And I'm trying to remember if the root of that is like stress and fear. Uh, I think fear is the big thing with fibromyalgia. So I would ask, you know, does, does Diane, Diane, does she speak fearfully a lot? Does she always, uh, you know, pessimistic, glass half empty, more of a type of person? Um, that is something you know, that might help direct our prayers more if it's kind of like the fibromyalgia thing. Um, because, yeah, fear, fear is a big one in that. Um, so, you know, just, just talking about that, let's just, you know, bind up a spirit of fear. What the hey? Lord God, we just submit Diane to you. In here, Lord God, we root out that fear. Uh, we ask, Lord God, that it would be ever before her to realize her enemies. That she may take authority over this. Okay. I'm going to say, um, you know, because the prayer requests, from, you know, this is directly from Diane, but I would just ask that, um, you know, we will stand with you um, as you pray for Diane. Um, just to discern if, if you feel that fear is a big thing, um, then uh, because of your relationship to Diane, um, take authority over it. Okay. Um, but we also just um, take authority over these pains. Any pain involved, we bind you pain in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you go to the first school of Jesus Christ for judgment. Just ask for your peace, your peace, Lord God, the flood over there. Your peace to just flood over her body. We proclaim healing, your hand of healing over her. We speak you over the back of the neck. We speak that peace in Jesus. That peace of Jesus. All right. All right, let me go back to um, this 
this prayer um, that I, I say is for a person that's struggling. And um, this one is written by Van Morrison, but the version sung by Don Mellencamp called Wild Night. Uh, if you, I'm not going to sing for you. Don't even start with me. <laughs> the Wild Night is calling. Okay. Come out and come on out and dance. Come on out and make romance. Um, and what I want to say with this is in in the in the song, you know, by it, I can understand that the gist of it is the temptation to return to sin, and that this is is all starting out by the mind not taking captive. The thought, the thought life, okay? That's where it starts because, like in the song, it says to brush your shoes and stand before your mirror. And as you comb your hair and you grab your coat and hat, see, they have already decided in their mind and then they're preparing to go out on the town. They've already done it in their mind, okay? Um, When you're walking out on the street, the wind catches your feet and sends you flying, crying. Ooh, the wild night is calling, okay? The sin already started because the, those thoughts did not get jailed up from the very get-go, okay? So, you know, I'm always exhorting people, don't go down dark alleys. You know, if there's things that cause you to have memories and you know, you can bind up, you can speak to those memories, you can wash those memories in the blood of Jesus, you can tell them uh, to go away, okay? But you can also take those feet and not go those same areas that start that mind going again. I mean, there's a reason in, in certain areas there are spirits that will pelt you. So if you uh, are weak in an area, don't go there, okay? Um, you know, and my exhortation is, you know, weakness in that area it shouldn't be entertained. The enemy says, remember, and that's right where the battle begins, even before brushing the shoes off, standing in the mirror, the moment he says, remember, is when you say, remember, thus saith the Lord. That's when you, that's when you use that two-edged sword. Uh, the word of, of the Lord. So, you know, whoever this person is, you can get through this if you fight with the word. If you take captive, if you refrain, you don't want to be caught in a vicious cycle, and you don't have to be. Um, it's not rocket science, what Jesus taught us. It's implementation, okay? And you're fine. You're capable. The enemy will immediately begin to dog you and cut you down say you can't do this, can't you do that, but all you need to know, you know, if he says we have to have faith like a child, because you are his, you are his, you have it all, now you just believe it and you repeat it, okay, and uh, on on my website, hearinggod.tv, and on hearinggod.proboards.com, I've placed the I am in Jesus, and you know, kind of like this the names of our Lord. Um, you get those topical Bible promise books, um, those are really handy because you get to that beefy truth of the word, that confession that says, I am this. Uh, I don't need to do this because the Lord says I'm this. I am not slave to this because I am this, you know. You fill in the blank. It's going to cause you to do a little bit of homework. Um, you should tailor your own confessions of the word because that's your sword. You have to fight. So, um, you know, after I got that song, I kept getting, you know, another one. Uh, this is a disco-sounding song called Give Me the Night by George Benson. And it's the same sort of thing. Whenever dark is falling, you know the spirit of the party starts to come alive. So, uh, you know, it's the same kind of theme. 
of like going out and partying or something. So, um, you know, don't give them night. <laughs> don't do it. Um, and uh, so let's just pray. Um, whoever this person is, or maybe you know some people that um, well, they love and they're partying on Saturday night. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, all is empty next to you, Lord God. Like we were praying about that spirit of addiction earlier, you fill every void. If I, I'm not to have fellowship with people that drag me to the dirt. If we need to be making new friends, uh, half of the battle is, 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 are you saying, are you asking the Lord to change your situation? Are you saying, Lord, I'm surrounded by these people. I have a testimony I want to share. Okay, so we had some connectivity problems. Um, Let's see. So uh, after reviewing what all was missed, I wanted to add this in because it it uh, blocked out. It was at the tail end of the first part of the recording. And I'm going to knit all this together. But I wanted to share this testimonial uh, about uh, what happened after Hubby and I got married. We, uh, we moved uh, from one town to another, got jobs. And, you know, a lot of the environment uh, played a factor. And Hubby worked with a lot of partiers. And it kind of drug us downhill a little bit. And then, uh, you know, we engaged in that whole thing. And at the same time, you know, I was seeking after God and hungering after God. But, you know, it was just who you're around. Well, we happened to go visit a friend um, from where we first met, and they had they were in like a small group that was having a revival. The Lord was really heavily present and really uh, just doing amazing things. And while we were there, uh, we had a major wake-up call. Uh, the Lord actually gave my husband a vision and basically was saying, this is it. Are you going to follow me or not? And it so shook him up. Uh, and, and you know, it's everything that was in my heart. You know, I was just so hungry for God and just so unhappy with the whole party thing. So um, when we got back, um, we were changed. And, you know, at the same time, you're surrounded by all these people that were partying just like you were. But I have the the blessed, and it happens to be that my husband, he's like a leader. Everywhere he goes, people are polarized and drawn to him. So it's really cool. Um, he decided, well, instead of going out partying, uh, he was going to start up a Bible study. And remember how I talked earlier in the broadcast about you don't know what God is doing in people's hearts. You don't know, um, you know, they could seem like something completely opposite, but you don't know what the Lord has been impressing and doing in people's lives. And that's just what happened in this situation, because Hubby started a Bible study, and we were doing Bible study together and everything, and uh, he decided, hey, what the heck, I don't care what anybody thinks, I'm going to invite all the partiers to Bible study. Wouldn't you know, we packed out the living room. I think we had three Bible studies before the Lord ended up moving us back um, back to where we first met and really embarked us in ministry and all sorts of awesome things. But what happened was that fire that had already begun in all those people's hearts that he already started uh, just inflamed all those people when we left 
uh, we left, and they didn't have a Bible study to go to, but they were hopping in churches then, and, uh, you know, it was everything God was already doing. And so, uh, by stepping out, um, it was an awesome thing, because God was already doing something there, and um, so I just wanted to share that, um, you know, for, you, you don't know what God's doing, and, and also, I mean, it takes some boldness to, to get out, uh, to not go down those dark paths. I'm a believer that if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost slash tongues, you are not saved. I know Derek Prince, you and probably others are not in the school of thought. I tend to believe it is salvational. Uh, I have been seeking it a long time and not receiving it. Um, okay, so let me, let me start with this. Um, that if you have not received the baptism with the Holy Ghost tongues, you are not saved. Okay. The best example for this is, is the thief on the cross, the one that received Jesus. Okay. And let me talk about, um, because God, you know, he makes it so simple that a child, you know, we have to be so, um, you know, just receive it as a child. That if the Lord says, if you receive what Jesus did, that that will cover over. Okay. Now, yes, people still have um, generational curses in operation. They still have doorways, maybe in access points in areas of their personality where it's clear that there is a you know, there's a demon pushing them on, or you can see that they're operating because they're not bearing good fruit in that area. Um, you know, and there's a difference between uh, receiving Jesus, really trying, and hitting some walls versus rejecting him entirely, okay? And so... I did a, a video called Salvation and the Wedding Garment. I think it's on my Freedom Zone 1 channel, but you might want to check that video out as well. Um, but the other thing I wanted to share... Okay, help me, Jesus. It was right there in the middle. <laughs> um, Okay, maybe, I, maybe I'll think of it as I as I go along here. Um, but the other thing you talked about is being in a deliverance community. So, you know, you're hanging out with people that do deliverance and stuff all the time. And what I talk about with the spiritual house cleaning series and why, you know, I really encourage people to do it is because if you're in a deliverance community or something, you'll have a tendency when you have a problem, oh, you just go and get it cleaned up. But you never clean out the inside of the car. You never do the work yourself, okay? Uh, you know, and my husband can tell you this because he has a seer anointing. And when, he, when I first really realized how much he could see, I would go up to him all the time and I would say, do you see anything? <laughs> you know, because he can see spirits, you know, veiled over the face, you can see in the eyes, you know, and after a while he would just quit telling me about things that he could see and experiences because, you know, it's just so much is overkill, you know, oh, oh, woe is me to have that gift, <laughs> you know, so anyhow, um, the whole spiritual house cleaning thing is responsible because you're just not going to someone and saying, fix me. You are being real, confessing it to the Lord, digging for all the access points, doing the homework and getting the scripture, that, that sword that you need, okay? The, the people that are just casting it out or whatever, that they're not really equipping you, okay? You have to do that yourself, okay? 
So um, that could be a big problem there. Um, you know, go f fix me, but not uh, go and do the work myself. Okay. Um, I also have another video about strong men listed in the scriptures. I think that might be on the Freedom Zone One channel as well. Based on this book written by Dr. Jerry and Carol Robison. Okay. I go through the highlights in it. And, you know, because you, when you uh, wrote in your email, you talk about blasphemy. Um, and, uh, you know, you basically came from a, <clears throat> you know, uh, more of a, a like, what'd you say? Kind of like satanic or whatever. Basically, you were just, before you had your conversion experience, you were very anti God, okay? And so I can attest that uh, even when I did the whole house cleaning series, there, there I had uh, the Lord showed me in a dream that I had a spirit of death and dying on it. Now, doing the St. Augustine's um, guide that I mentioned in the spiritual house cleaning series, that doesn't come up. Um, that basically is like in this. This has other um, points of examination in it that the St. Augustine's is more of like dealing with have I done this sin, have I done that sin, or whatever. But this is more like root uh, spirits. And some of the stuff can be generational, and some of it, um, you know, that you just open the door and walk right in. One of them listed here is a perverse spirit. That's Isaiah 19.14. It's listed. Okay. And um, part of this, because you've mentioned pornography, you, you return to that every now and then. Um, this spirit has a, a tie in many areas. Um, atheist is one, evil actions, filthy mind. Um, perversions, doctrinal error, twisting word. Um, there's a lot of things in the perverse spirit. So I would, um, you know, if you could get this book, uh, I think when I first found it, I think I might have first found it at a library. Always check the library first because if you can get it for free and then check it out and see if you really want it, then you can go buy it. So, um, Perverse spirit, okay? So do some discerning on that one. <clears throat> and um, another one is spirit of antichrist, okay? And there's, there's a lot of things in there, but this is in 1 John 4, verse 3, okay? And this is listed. And oh, my last thing just fell out. On the last one I had is a spirit of error. That's First John four six. Okay, and there are some, you know, even false doctrines or unteachable or th there's just a whole gamut of things. But I'm I'm listing that because of the the issue that you're having with. Um, you know, the whole baptism in the Holy Spirit kind of thing, okay? Um, and, oh, I know, the Lord just reminded me. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, in the book of Revelations, the churches, the seven churches, okay? Philadelphia, read Philadelphia, and the other one that makes it is Smyrna, isn't it? Okay, I think it's Smyrna. Smyrna and Philadelphia make it, okay? Smyrna uh, has difficulties and persecutions, okay? Uh, Philadelphia is at that plateau where the enemies are made to come bow down before your feet. And so I want to talk about, uh, you know, there are Christians 
that are not filled with the Holy Spirit as in empowerment, okay? But it, they they are going to have problems and whatnot, just like in the, the Church of Smyrna, okay? But they're saved, okay? They're saved by their profession. They've received the Lord. It's good to go. We can learn a lot from Smyrna and Philippians, or what I just say? <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> okay. And what we learned from Philadelphia is they, they are the ones that have received the baptism and are empowered, okay? There, there's people that I've seen that have received the baptism but did, don't go any further with the giftings and really walk it out, okay? Um, so look, look at those, and I think that will help you. As, long, as well as uh, as you're discerning and, and searching out these other spirits that I mentioned, um, the perverse, error, and spirit of Antichrist, okay? Um, and I pray that you won't go to your group and bring up these names and say, cast them out of me, okay? I would really like to encourage you to do the uh, spiritual house clean. And yes, you know, I come across people that say, hey, I've done all this stuff and whatever, but it's a process of training, okay? Uh, when you're journaling stuff out, um, you know, you you're writing stuff out and you realize that in what you're writing, you're writing a, a confession of, of something, then you can catch that and then you can repent of it, revoke it, replace it, and move on, okay? Because some of it isn't all about, um, you know, deliver me of this, this, and the spirit. Sometimes you have to go to root of where those things began by what you said or did or saw or whatever and um, responsible deliverance, okay? So I want to share that with you and we can continue to talk about this. Um, um, so I I know you wrote me again, but I, I don't really have time to read and, and keep, you know, with all the technical difficulties I've been having. But just start there, okay? And we'll keep going at it. But a lot of it, uh, th there's another video I did. It's on my Freedom Soul One channel. Battlefield of the Mind Discerning Thoughts. Very important one that would be very helpful for you, okay? Um, because when you're getting doubt, you have the word here, and the word says, only, only believe, only speak, and it's promised to you, and then you're expecting a warm, fuzzy sensation or whatever. No, you can't go by that. You stand on the word. So when the thought comes and says, well, you're not this or that because you're not feeling, you're not experiencing, you're not this, then that's when you chop its legs off and you say, no, no, enemy, the word says this. I have it, and I don't need warm fuzzies. I don't need lightning bolts and tornadoes to know it's true. It's true because the word says it's true, and I'm going to stand on the word, okay? So that's just kind of like the training you have to get yourself into, okay? And maybe the church group that you hang and run with isn't doing that. Well, you don't have to follow them, okay? Get real in the Word for yourself and, and overcome, okay? All right. Um, let me see what else I got here. All right, Exodus Orphanage in Kampala. I believe this is Africa. Um, Ten of the orphans have measles and have requested prayer. 
Lord Jesus, for your mighty hand. We made it took on these little ones. We made it took on these little ones. Just burn up the spread of this in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for God that you would walk through. You would walk through that place and sanitize it. We breathe in the name of Jesus. We thank and praise you, Lord God. We just ask for your hand of provision, Lord Jesus, as well. That they would have more than what they need, Lord God. In overcoming uh, this illness, that it uh, just go to your footstool, Lord Jesus. Meals, we command you, go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. And we thank you, Lord God, for your hand of provision. Your hand of provision so that they can have uh, good, clean water in sanitary conditions. Thank you for that provision, Lord Jesus. We speak health and life and healing over all of these to the praise and glory of your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay, I think I think that's all I got except for um Mahai asked um you know relationship issues with this one as well. Um and the enemy's really been attacking uh, his mind. But there was an unequal yoke, and he has, um, you know, broke broke off. And um, she is really retaliating and just being cruel. Um, and uh, he's saying that. He's forgiven her. So, Lord God, we just uh, pray for, for these. Indeed, uh, we just uh, bind up confusion. And command it to go to your foot, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. For a sound mind. Thank you, Lord God. We just uh, continue to ask that any soul ties. Uh, that were not of you, Lord God, uh, be broken by the power of your mighty name, Lord Jesus. We command them broken and destroyed in the power of your name, Jesus. We declare restoration. We thank you for forgiveness. I thank you, Lord God, that he is hungry and seeking you on the right path. And just bind up any guilt in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to the soul of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no place here. No place whatsoever. We just ask for your blessing upon her. And blessing upon him as he moves on. And just ask Lord Jesus that you just continue to guide him, whether he goes to the right or to the left, that he would go in your way, you would guide his steps. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless you. We just call forth all those words, all those hurt, hurtful things that Jesus has spoken to fall down, void, powerless, uh, of no effect whatsoever. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that he can recognize it for what it is, that it's the spirits operating through her, lashing out of him. And that uh, is not her. Maybe she just ask that you would just bless him as he moves forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, and I and I can say um, the last time, the last session that I had uh, with, I ended up doing that excerpt that I posted on the Hearing God 
YouTube channel about uh, the kick me sign. Um, a girlfriend in the Lord uh, I've been communicating with. Um, the Lord um, has really been, uh, you know, using that stuff. It, it's just a timing thing too. It's pretty amazing how the Lord will impress things upon me, and it's actually a battle somebody's right going through right now. And it's just like uh, a really a life lifesaver kind of thing. So I just want to praise you, Jesus, for um, doing that, and just pray for that one and her family and all that she's going through. I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you just continue to uh, encourage her to take the thoughts captive and to overcome by the, the power in your word and um, don't receive the negative voice of the enemy, but um, stand on, on the truth of your word. I just ask for your blessing upon her and her family. I just pray all this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Okay, I do not know if the last part, the, the first part of the broadcast recorded even since it crashed. I do not know. So I might only have this little tidbit, but know uh, if you uh, contacted me or whatever, um, or post it on the forum that we did pray for you, and I'm sorry if it got cut off, but um, um, it happens. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go now. Um, I'll let you know when the next broadcast is, probably, you know, every other week still. But uh, just ask that uh, we just go forward. Uh, in these uh, troubling times, Lord God, we just uh, continue to pray peace over Israel. As, as everyone seems to be turning against her, we declare peace. Peace rests upon her. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we pray peace and blessing over Israel. I thank you, Lord God, that every word in your book shall come to pass, shall come true. Even in the midst of what seems dire, you shall rescue your own. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. We just thank and praise you, Lord, and we just so look forward to your coming. It's coming soon. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so that's all I got for this week. Remember, uh, hearinggod.proboards.com, post prayer requests and praise reports and share whatever is going on with you, whatever he's sharing with you. And uh, uh, just go forth and be blessed. And uh, I'll see you on the forum. God bless you.